Tsuka wakes up to find herself trapped in a sealed box. The narrow and humid space, and the bugs everywhere, make Tsuka feel terrified. She feels that she was put into a coffin and has been buried underground. Thinking about this possibility, Tsuka completely broke down. She slapped around in the box, but her voice was muffled, but no one outside ever responded. She searched around in the box and finally found a cell phone at her feet. Hurriedly straining, she fished the phone to her side. This cell phone is not Swazi's, and also said a password. She had no choice but to use the emergency call to call the police for help. Sukal was a doctoral student. She was in her lab studio on this day when she was suddenly attacked from behind with a stick. When she woke up, she realized she was trapped in the case. However, when the case officers asked about the location of the box, Sukal said she didn't know either, and the other person kept asking for information. After some conversation, but never able to get directions, Shwazi's mood instantly collapsed. The case officers to see the situation hurried to calm her emotions, and then let her say their cell phone number, so that you can use the cell phone number to locate, learn at her exact location, but the phone is not their own. She simply do not know what the number is, and the phone is not unlocked, cannot see any information about the operator. Case officers heard, let Xiaomi see find a way to remove the cell phone card, the back of the card operator information to tell them. They can be located according to the operator. Xiaomi dare not have had a bit of negligence. Hastily removed the work plate on the clothes, bite the flashlight with his mouth, removed the pins on the work plate, aligned with the hollow of the phone card slot and press, finally succeeded in removing the phone card and the operator information on the back of the card clearly remembered on the back of the hand. We opened the phone and dialed the police again. She immediately named the phone's operator. The case officer said that he would immediately conduct a trace and would notify the result within 10 minutes and then hung up the phone. Suko is not willing to be so passive waiting. She's going to try to unlock the phone's password. Unexpectedly, after several attempts, it was incorrect and the phone was forced to lock for one minute due to multiple password errors. Just when Sukal was in despair, there was a loud noise coming from the box, and it was still moving. She hurriedly and desperately slapped the box, shouting for help, but no response. Then dialed the police, said the box is moving. Is the direction from head to toe? Can also clearly hear the sound of wheels across the ground. The police side has locked Sukha's approximate location. Will be positioned within 500 meters to start rescue. Prolonged pressure to make Shanxi's spirit on the verge of collapse. She begged the case officers not to hang up the phone. But the other party ruthlessly refused. Because this will consume the phone's power. Once the phone is out of power shut down. Between them completely cut off contact. Sukha then reluctantly calmed down. But she had only just hung up the phone. When she heard an organ sound coming from outside. She hurriedly picks up her cell phone and calls the case officers, saying that she heard the deafening sound of an organ and that she's most likely being held in the church. Sure enough, the police finally locked the location is exactly the church. The case officers is rushing non-stop, but also instruct Sukha if she hears the sound of search and rescue. Think of a way to create a motion to respond to facilitate a quick find. Sukha's hand and heart finally fell to the ground excitedly waiting for rescue, but when the case officers came to the church later, a carpet search, while calling loudly, but never found any trace of anyone, and Sukal in the case waited for a long time, still did not wait for a search and rescue personnel, she finally couldn't hold back, and took the initiative to call the case officers, but the other party said, that the rescue teammates had turned the church upside down, and there was no pipe organ there, and even more so, there was no case that Sukya had mentioned, Sukya anxiously, asked the other party what the next step is, but due to the lack of detailed clues, the police can continue the investigation. If the search and rescue is to continue, the family needs to apply before the police will be sent out again for rescue. After saying rescue decisively hung up the phone, Swazi this time is completely collapsed. She frantically slapped the box, let out a desperate roar, but this in addition to simply venting. There is no use. She once again took out her cell phone, tended to vent before one, even mistakenly guessed right. Sukul rushes to call her husband, but there's no answer. Just as she was leaving a message, she seemed to hear her husband coming back, and she rushed to ask for help, but the signal was so bad that her husband couldn't hear what she was saying. Weird yo everyone weird yo, the phone's battery was running low, and with a few drops, the phone was completely dead. The last straw just so dissipated, Shaun see crazy struggle. Just at this time, a beam of blinding light shone in, the lid of the box was opened, colleagues have gathered around. Swazi sat her day up violently. It turned out that what had just happened was all because of a study she had volunteered for to try out the changes in the brain in a closed state. But as soon as she turned her head, she woke up with a start once again. She was still in this metal box, jumping back and forth across between hope and despair. Sukha's heart finally broke down. On the other side of the room, Sukya lies quietly in her hospital bed. It turns out that she's a vegetable after suffering a brain injury due to an attack in the lab. The encounters in the box were all hallucinations created by her brain. 
while she was in a coma. The reason why she found it difficult to breathe was because the doctor had inserted a laryngoscope in her mouth during the examination. The bites of long insects on her arms were actually nurses injecting drugs, and the feeling of being moved in the box was hospital staff pushing her to resuscitate her. The loud bang of the church organ she heard was actually the sound of a report from the examining instrument. The voice of her husband that she heard on the phone was a call from her hospital bed. The strong sunlight she saw at the last moment was actually the doctor checking her pupils. Sukha's seemingly calm face lying on the hospital bed is actually the depths of her mind's consciousness, undergoing an endless jailbreak, hissing and struggling to break free from the prison of her consciousness. When Sukha's cell phone went dead, it was also a metaphor for her completely becoming a vegetable, still conscious but locked in a narrow box of consciousness, never able to come into contact with outside food. Perhaps this is how a vegetable really feels.